Not until they get it. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call the uh, executive committee to order. If I could have roll call down, uh, Mr. Secretary, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mike Faust, Chuck Walker. Yep. Joel McRae. Yes, sir. Uh, myself, uh, Shirley Capato, Assistant Secretary. Michelle. Yes. Yes. Ron Sarnicky. Greg Cross. Yes. Mitch Boak. Yep. Is Mitch on? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, John Long. Here. Kate. Um, Skip. Here. Okay. Uh, Richard Brooks. Sir, I'm here. Okay, <laughs> sir. Thank you. Um, Frank Underwood. I'm here. John McDowell. I'm here. Gene Worthington. Here. Steve Cox. Here. John Denver. Here. Jay Olson. Uh, President uh, Joseph. Angel Wolf, I'm here. <laughs> okay, sir. Phil Ridgel. Here. Phil's here. He was here on the minute ago. There he is. Okay. Hobie? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tommy Madeline Jr. Here. Okay. Uh, to the executive committee. Mr. Chairman's here. Lee Lutz is here. Ron Block? Here. Charlie Abrick? Yes. Uh, Tim Dayton? John Fisher. Bob Phillips. Present. Doug uh, Simpkins. Here. Charlie Simpson. Present. Dan Stevens. Dan Stevens. Buddy Sutton. I saw Buddy's uh, name a while ago, so. Here, here. There you are. Wayne. Here. Rick Blair. Here. Okay, let me go back. Tim Dayton. John Fisher. <clears throat> and uh, Dan Stevens. Mr. Chairman, you have uh, three, six, you have nine plus yourself. You have a quorum. Okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, basically, I just want to go over to tonight's meeting. Uh, we're basically going to follow the in order of the agenda. Uh, there will be re two reports, one from the Credential Committee, one from the Constitution and Bylaw Committee. We will go into nominations, and then we will uh, have three motions be brought up on the, uh, the call this evening um, to uh, have a vote. Um, with that said, I'll call for uh, Mr. President for nominations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, if everyone could please mute your phone. Uh, that will help tremendously unless you um, have, have a need to speak. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, first, I'd like to go ahead and uh, uh, thank everybody for attending this evening, and I'd like to go ahead and, and start the nomination process. Um, does anybody have any questions before we get started? Yeah, just uh, we need the credentials report, I believe. We were doing that before the nominations. Credentials in the Constitution and bylaws reports. Thank you, Richard. Mr. Secretary. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, the credentials for uh, the 128th Annual Convention totaled uh, 373 member companies. Of those member companies, a total of 350 are uh, active departments, 21 associate members, and two uh, sustained members. 
of the 350, 336 companies submitted credentials for 2020. Letters have been mailed to, I'm sorry, letters have been yeah. mailed, phone calls made, and members of the executive committee made contact with 14 of the departments that have not uh, submitted their credentials and trying to encourage them. To also, uh, in reference to the uh, credentials, there was two questions that was asked. One, total number of responding volunteers and total number, number of non-responding volunteers. We have a total of 16,447 responding, 14,446 non-responding. Of those, um, gives a total of 30,893 uh, members. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it is, uh, and I don't know if you want the motion now or later for the uh, uh, suspension uh, for the suspension of non uh, non uh, reporting uh, members. Might as well do it right now while we're on that. Mr. Chairman, we'll knock that out. So I need a motion. Mr. Chairman, yes. I make the motion that we. Uh, follow the secretary's report and make the appropriate suspensions. I'll second that. So I have a motion. I have a second by Ron Block. Any discussion? Sepkins has a question. All in favor? Have a question. Up. Uh, okay. Go ahead. The motion Got to it. the motion to suspend companies that have not paid dues or sum submitted credentials. I think we ought to spell it out for the, the year 2020, because anybody could read this as we're suspending you and that's it. Now we all know that they didn't do the proper paperwork or didn't pay their dues or whatever for this year. They have been identified. But the motion as printed on my paper says to suspend companies that have not paid dues or submitted credentials. I think we ought to, do a little clarification. You want the name of the companies? They could just you could just put it there for the for the calendar year 2020 convention activities. Yeah, that that's all that needs it. Just just the date. I have a question. Does that mean a person or a company that did not pay dues? or a company that did not submit their credentials, or did they have to not do both? These, okay, there are um, three separate motions. 17, I think 17 that did not submit their, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's 14 companies that did not uh, submit their uh, credentials. Only thing I'm asking uh, for the suspension is that they are uh, uh, just suspended for the period of the election where uh, I do not have right. to send a, I just need something to cover me that I do not have to send a ballot to these uh, 14 companies. And it's only for, vo it's for voting purposes only. Correct. Right. They can show up the day of the first day of the convention and, and pay their dues and be able to participate, correct? And, and, correct. And, well, yeah, that's where I was going. Thank you. you now that's, you that's okay with that, Doug, or do you want to? Yeah. I think you ought to have something, you know, in writing here or something to identify the calendar year that we're talking about. If uh, wasn't this motion, was it the motion to, re as reflected by the secretary's report, which is for the calendar year 2020? That's the Doesn't report. Hurt. That's the report from the secretary. Correct. But we're voting on it as the executive committee, yeah. but it doesn't reflect anything. Refer to the secretary's notes. Doesn't say that. All you got to do is put in the air. It, for the calendar a, year 2020. Okay, well, that, that, my, motion, my motion was to reference the secretary's report. 
but if, if that's the case, then I'll amend, I'll amend my motion to include the words 2020 or the the uh, year 2020. The 2020 secretary's report. Does the second because, agree? Do you amend your motion? Yes. Does the second agree? That's correct. So yes. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Who? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Follows committee report? Mr. Chairman, Mr. One Secretary. Quick second. Yes. This is uh, President Faust. Everyone, please mute your phones. When you have noise in the background, the camera switches to you. Please mute your phones. Thank you. Mr. Secretary. Okay. Reference to the uh, bylaws. There are two questions uh, on the bylaws uh, that will be on the ballot. Uh, question number one, proposed amendment, is um, realigning the um, terms of the, the secretary, treasurer, and the financial secretary uh, from a uh, one or two-year term to a three-year term. These would be staggered over the uh, next few years and until they fall in line to uh, start the three-year term. That is proposal, proposed amendment number one. Proposed amendment number two is to, uh, it's a, under article five committees. Uh, it's uh, section one relating to standing committees and it's removing the recruitment and retention as a standing committee and placing it in as a regular committee. And the purpose of the uh, changes uh, regarding uh, the committee would uh, give the president uh, more authority, uh, more uh, flexibility in appointing his uh, committee for this and uh, working uh, through the uh, uh, chain. That's the two bylaw changes. Okay. Any questions with that? Simpkins, motion to accept both. Any questions? I have a motion to accept both bylaw changes. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion on the two bylaws? Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, point of order. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, sir. Who second? Ron Block. Yes. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Mitch Boat, financial secretary. Has uh, on the first motion that we did, uh, yes, reference to the uh, credentials that was credentials only. We still have one company that did not pay their dues. The, I believe the motion only covered credentials. No, it covered the uh, my report, and uh, the uh, dues are on that report. Okay, just want to verify. Yeah, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Secretary? That's all I have at this time. Okay. Now I'll turn it back over to Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Can everyone hear me? Robbie, do you have, can you hear me? Hey, it's sound fine, Mike. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so I'd like to go ahead <clears throat> and start the nomination process for the uh, for the 2020 election. Um, 
I'd like to start that by opening up the nominations for president. Are there any nominations for the office of president? Mr. President, can you hear me? This is Frank. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to nominate Chuck Walker for president. Okay, I met Chuck years ago at the Shulman Delphi Fire Department. Over the past decade, Chuck and I have worked very closely together. He served three years as president of the Prince George's County Volunteer Fire and Rescue Association. During that time, I spent many hours and nu numerous functions with him at the fire department. And these talks led me to conclude that Chuck knows exactly where he's headed with the MSFA future. Chuck showed himself to be a hardworking, dedicated individual and as a role model for himself and the advancement of the fire service. I consider him a great man of great integrity. Chuck has been through several medical issues of which we know about. For the past many months that he was in the hospital, Chuck and I would talk just about every week. We would sit down and we always talked about fire department first and health second. If the fire department was doing good, Chuck was doing good. All right. Okay. Uh, I, he has had me fill in for him doing these medical things, and I am honored to do that for the gentleman. All right. Uh, Chuck works from the heart, and you know I'm going to throw this in. We don't know whose heart it is, but he does it from the heart. <laughs> and therefore, I, I am incredibly pleased to nominate and bring to the floor the name of Chuck Charles Walker to the office of president of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Frank. And uh, may I ask who is uh, going to second his nomination, please? Mike, this is Lee Lutz. My name's Lee Lutz. I'm vice chairman of the executive committee from Prince George's County and a life member of the Glendale Fire Association Incorporated. And I, would, and I second the nomination of Charles Chuck Walker for the office of president of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. In the interest of brevity, I'm not gonna name all the names, but I will tell you this, there are the others seconding his nomination, 23 past presidents, um, 11 executive committee members, 10 other associations throughout the state, uh, four trustees, and numerous other people and county presidents throughout the state of Maryland. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Are there any other nominations for the Office of President? Are there any other nominations for the Office of President? Are there any other nominations for the Office of President? Fern Down Moves. Go ahead, John. Fern Down Moves to close the nominations for President. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next open to nominations for the Office of First Vice President. Are there any nominations for the Office of First Vice President? Yes, this is John McDowell, President of Baltimore County Volunteer Firemen's Association, also President of our Buse Volunteer Fire Department. I'd like to nominate Joel McCray from Long Green mm -hmm. Volunteer Fire Company. Joel from day one was elected to the office of second vice president of MSFA. He's actively represented the interests of the association as members for, for many years. Working with the other association officers and committees, Joel's continued to foster the good working relationship that MSFA has with MIFRI, MIMS, MEMA, and Chuck Trauma. Maryland State Police, Maryland State Fire Marshal Office, the Maryland Department of Military and DNR, Forestry, and the Maryland Fire Chiefs. When life as we know it changed in March of this year, Joel adopted to the new ways of doing business. He continued to attend CMAC, the Maryland Emergency Services Board, and the Maryland Fire Rescue Education Training Commission by conference calls. He also attended over 40 county association meetings over the past year, either in person or virtually, to listen to the needs of our members and let our members know what the state association is doing for them. Working with the legislative committee, he represented our interests in Annapolis during the past legislative session by providing written and verbal testimony on a number of bills that affected the volunteers. He also regularly attended the Friday legislative committee meetings in Annapolis with our partners and the Fire and Rescue Coalition. <clears throat> he looks forward to continuing the good working relationship that has been established with our legislators. Over the past year, he attended meetings of many of the MSFA committees, including VCAF, safety, training, cancer support, convention, recruitment and retention, 
and he recognizes the importance of the work these committees are doing every day. Stay Along stay with stay the stay other stay. presidents and out-of-state coordinators, he was honored to represent Maryland neighboring state association meetings in West Virginia, Virginia, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. I believe his 30 years of experience as a volunteer, including past president of his company and the Baltimore County Volunteer Firefighters Association, and his experience as a member of the MSFA Executive Committee, and his participation with and chairman of a number of MSFA, MSFA committees over the years, and as second vice president of MSFA provides him with the background and experience to serve as the association of the first vice president. I therefore nominate Joel McRae for the office of first vice president of the MSFA. Thank you, John. And uh, I believe it's gonna be seconded by Doug Simpkins. Doug? Good evening, everyone. Also, like Mr. Lutz said, in the interest of brevity, during this unique pandemic situation, we wish to report that all past presidents support Joel, executive board members, numerous county association, trustees, elected officers. <clears throat> In fact, we have not heard anyone or any organization within this organization who do not support Joel. Therefore, it is with pride and pleasure that I second the nomination for the office of first vice president of the Maryland State Farmers Association for Mr. Joel McRae. And in lieu of the ban, let the party begin. I expected nothing less, Doug. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Are there any other nominations for the Office of First Vice President? Are there any other nominations for the Office of First Vice President? Are there any other nominations for the Office of First Vice President? Move they be closed. Second. I can't, Dave Lowe's out there. Thank you very much. We'll now open the nominations for the office of second vice president. Are there any nominations for the office of second vice president? Yes, Gene Worthington, past president. Officers, delegates, and members of the MSFA, this is a true pleasure today, one that many of us have waited some time. It is my honor to offer the nomination of my friend, Ben Kurtz, for the office of second vice president. Ben has all the credentials to assume this office to include administrative and operational. He was a self-employed businessman for 44 years, bringing his personal experience as a licensed mortician and funeral director. Someone who needs to be compassionate as you deal with a family member who may have just lost a loved one. He will continue to bring integrity and dedication as your second vice president, just he has while serving the last five years as your trustee. This past year, Ben has traveled across the state speaking of his credentials and summarizing his qualifications. They are many. Within the MSFA, to name a few, he served on the executive committee for 12 years and was appointed to chairman by myself and past president Denver. He was also served on numerous other committees and chaired many of them since 1973, getting his first committee appointment in 1994. Not only is he active within the MSFA, he is the current president of his home company, Jarrettsville, past president of Harford County and past president of Harford Cecil. We know Ben has these administrative skills as the MSFA awarded him with <coughs> Administrative Award, the Glade Hill Thompson Award, and was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Ben is committed to performing the duties of this office to the best of his ability. He has traveled all across this state for many years and brings with him a wealth of experience and knowledge. Along with his administrative skill set, he brings operational experience as well, serving as chief and EMS chief at Jarrettsville. He holds a fire officer certification along with being an ALS licensed provider for 40 years. He has been recognized by Boston General Hospital with the Golden Hour Award for reviving cardiac patients twice. He is a Shock Trauma Hero Award honoree, received the Distinguished Service Award from MIMS, 
and has been recognized by many fire service organizations during his career. Ben has served MSFA with distinction for many years with his many talents, knowledge, and determination to make the association better. He continues to demonstrate great commitment to the total emergency services and will make an outstanding second vice president. You all know the dedication of this gentleman. Let us welcome this new leader, one that will continue the strong vision of our mission, one that will be a team player, and one that will represent all companies across the state. I strongly endorse and support Ben Kurtz, the Office of Second Vice President, and encourage each delegate to do the same. Now I'd like to introduce past President Steve Cox for the second. Thank you, Gene. Mr. President, officers, delegates, alternates, and guests, it's my honor to second the nomination of a close friend of mine, Benjamin Webster Kurtz, for the office of second vice president of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. Past President Worthington clearly outlined Ben's service to Jarrettsville Volunteer Fire Company, Hartford County Fire and Emergency Service Association, the Hartford Cecil Volunteer Firemen's Association, and the Maryland State Firemen's Association. The leadership roles held in those organizations make them an outstanding candidate to lead the Maryland State Firemen's Association. I've known Ben and worked with him for almost 50 years. He is a hard worker, focused to achieve results and dedicated to the task. When he commits to a project, he always follows through, normally ahead of schedule. In addition to our professional working relationship, I'm pleased to say Ben is my granddaughter's godfather. I urge you to join with me in seconding the nomination of Benjamin W. Kurtz for second vice president of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. I now introduce past president John Denver for additional seconds. Good evening, it's John Denver. In the uh, interest of time, we'll just summarize. Uh, the additional seconds include 26 past presidents, four trustees, seven associations, and numerous officers, committee chairs, committee members of the, of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it very much. Are there any other nominations for the Office of Second Vice President? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Second Vice President? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Second Vice President? Dave Lewis, I move that move. all nominations be closed. Congratulations. <laughs> there was a motion. Was there a second? I'm sorry. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Parliamentarian, do I have to do that every time? Ask for... Do. Yeah, I think I do. I just want to make sure. Yes, you do. I thought so. I thought so. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> now open the nominations for the Office of Secretary. Are there any nominations for the Office of Secretary? Mr. President, uh, Dan Stevens here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening, officers, past presidents, delegates, members, and distinguished guests of the 128th Annual Convention and Conference of the Maryland State Firearms Association. My name is Dan Stevens, and I'm a member of the Executive Committee and also the Waldorf Volunteer Fire Department. It's a great pleasure and special honor to come before you this evening to nominate my good friend, Doyle E. Cox, for the Office of Secretary of Maryland State Firemen's Association. Past President Cox has served in the Secretary's position of this great association since 2012 and has proven his ability to faithfully perform the duties of this position in an outstanding <coughs> manner. I ask you to join with me in supporting and electing Doyle Cox to the Office of Secretary to the Maryland State Firemen's Association. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dan. And uh, Charlie Abrick, you're uh, up for seconding, I believe. Correct. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everyone. My name is Charles Abrick. I'm current, a, currently a member of the MSFA Executive Committee and president of the Junior Fire Company in Frederick. I consider it an honor and a privilege to come before you this evening to second the nomination of Doyle Cox for the Office of Secretary of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Are there any other nominations for the Office of Secretary? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Secretary? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Secretary? Move the nominations be closed. Second, Charles Simpson. All in favor of closing the nominations? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. We'll now open nominations for the Office of Financial Secretary. Are there Mr. any nominations for the Office of Financial Secretary? Mr. President, Ron Sarnicky, MSFA Treasurer and President of the United Communities Volunteer Fire Department in Queen Anne's County. Go ahead, Good Ron. evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everyone. And to, to you, Mr. President, to the officers, our past presidents, our delegates, members, guests of the MSFA, I have to say, as, as I get a chance to make this nomination, we are embarking upon a historic journey as we begin the events of the 128th Annual Convention and Conference via Zoom. Never thought I'd say that in my lifetime, but uh, here we are and it's working. It is an honor to submit the name of Mitch Folk from the Jarrettsville Volunteer Fire Company for the position of financial secretary for the Maryland State Firemen's Association. Mitch has been serving in this position for seven years and he and I are on a two year rotation cycle for serving in that position we hold. And this year he's required to run for another term in order to stay in office. And if the bylaws amendment passes, we'll be on a three year cycle. Mitch started his fire service experience in October of 1972 when he joined Jarrettsville and has served as a delegate to the MSFA Annual Convention and Conference since 1973. He has served on the MSFA Ways and Means Committee for some time now and currently serves as committee chair. His work with this committee has brought a great deal of success to their annual activities, which has benefited the MSFA significantly through the financial capital that they were able to raise in support of our association activities. This organization would not be able to do what it does without those funds. Mitch has held many leadership and managerial positions within his individual company, his county association, and within the Maryland State Firemen's <laughs> Association. In all of those roles, he has demonstrated excellent qualities to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of the positions he has served in. Since the formation of the MSFA finance team, Mitch has taken a very active role in carrying out the fiduciary responsibilities entrusted to him and has been a valuable asset to the team. And I have personally seen his efforts and, and I'm very pleased to have him as a member of the team and have the opportunity to work with him on various financial matters of this organization. But most of all, I'm pleased to be able to call him my friend. Having said all this, I ask you lend your support to Mitch and his reelection for the position of financial secretary for the Maryland State Firemen's Association. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. I believe, um... Past President Steve Cox is up for the second. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, officers, <clears throat> alternates, alternates, and guests, it's my honor to second the nomination of a close friend of mine, Mitch Vogt, for the Office of Financial Secretary of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. Chief Vogt has held numerous offices within the Jarrettsville Volunteer Fire Company, including Chief. Mitch currently serves as treasurer of the Hartford Cecil Volunteer Firemen's Association. In addition to his 48 active years service with Jarrettsville, he's also an active responder with the Norrisville Volunteer Fire Company and a member of the Hartford County Hazmat Team. 
Mitch has served as the financial secretary to the Maryland State Farmers Association for the past eight years. He's a financial team, which is like a triple crown, the treasurer, financial secretary, and budget chair to ensure MSFA's financial stability. It's an honor and a privilege for me to second the nomination of Mitch Vogt for financial secretary of the Maryland State Farmers Association. Thank you, Steve, and thanks, Ron. Are there any other nominations for the Office of Financial Secretary? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Financial Secretary? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Financial Secretary? I move nominations be closed. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. We'll now open uh, nominations for the uh, Office of Chief Chaplain. Are there any nominations for the Office of Chief Chaplain? Jay Olson, are you online? <laughs> He's online. He's just muted. No. Jay Olson, if you're online, please unmute yourself. Come on, Jay. Right here, Mr. President, in absence of Jay Olson, uh, this is Dave Lewis, past president of the Maryland State Farmers Association member of Odin Volunteer Fire Company. I've known John. On long for a long time. John has served as our chief chaplain for a long time, uh, and I don't have a written script since I'm not Jay Olson and don't have one in front of me, but it's certainly as, as a dear friend, and certainly John has spent a lot of time. Many of us know that we've, we've had a chance to, uh, unfortunate chances sometimes to interact with John as, as he's made many hospital calls, many family visits, and taken care of our, our, our down and, and elderly and, and sick, sick firefighters and families, as well as those who have passed on and, and he certainly certainly passes on, on the word of God and the word of, of the fire department spirit. And certainly uh, in absence of Jay, who I knew wanted to be here to do this, it's certainly my pleasure to place the name of John Long uh, to the ballot for the office of chief chaplain. Thank you, Dave. And for the uh, second of this nomination, please. Yes, uh, my name is Joe Angeloff. I'm past chief and currently the president of the Early Heights Volunteer Fire Company in Savannah Park, Maryland. It's an, indeed an honor to second the nomination of Reverend John F. Long, Jr. for the re-election to the position of chief chaplain of the Maryland State Farmers Association. He has held this position since 2005 and has continually proven himself as a sincere, dedicated and extremely well-qualified individual to have held this position. He has contributed an untold amount of time and quality effort in the performance of his duties. As such, he has proven himself to be a very important asset to the association and to its members. It's a dis distinct honor and pleasure to second the nomination of Reverend John F. Long <laughs> Jr for the position of Chief Chaplain to the Maryland State Farmers Association. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. Are there any other nominations for the Office of Chief Chaplain? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Chief Chaplain? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Chief Chaplain? I move the nominations for Chief Chaplain be closed. Second, Second. Ann Stevens. Thank you, gentlemen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks very much. Um, lastly, we're opening nominations for the position of Board of Trustees. Are there any nominations for the Office of Trustee? Dean Worthington, past president. Thank you, Gene. Officers, delegates, and members to the MSFA, it is my honor and with extreme pleasure to stand before you 
today as a past trustee to the offer of the nomination of my friend, Obi Howe, for the office of trustee. Obi has a passion for the volunteer fire service, serving now nearly 50 years and as a retired career firefighter for 40 years. He has traveled across this state in seeking this office, meeting with almost every county association until the pandemic. He has shared his personal experiences, qualifications, and training records at those meetings, so I will not recap them. Instead, I prefer to speak with you about the Office of Trustee. There are no qualifications other than being an active member of a member company. Now let me speak to you directly about the qualities that a trustee needs to perform his duties that make Hobie highly qualified for this office. First, he must have strong administrative skills in reviewing the applications for assistance. He is currently the trustee to the Hartford County Volunteer Fire and EMS Association, representing his home company, Falston. Served as president of the Harper Cecil Volunteer Farm Association. He was the president of the Cumberland Valley Volunteer Farm Association, <coughs> the nationally recognized organization of highway safety for emergency responders on the highway. Second, you must have what I call institutional knowledge, which is your experience, training, and background. Ruby has served on the MSFA Safety Committee for over 20 years and serving as chairman for five different presidents. He holds many MIFRI training certifications. While serving as president of Cumberland Valley, he has assisted with their making of best practices videos for all emergency responders. Third, you must be willing to travel anywhere across this state. The trustees meet several times during the year and you may have to travel to a member company to assist with a line of duty injury or even worse, a death. Again, as chairman of the safety committee, he has traveled all across this state to meetings or other details when requested. He has traveled from New York to Florida to Indianapolis, most of the Eastern United States representing Cumberland Valley. And the last quality I will speak about is Hobie is a good guy. One who always greets you with a smile and a hearty handshake. It gives you that feeling of what can he do to assist you or help you. He must be a team player in working with the other trustees. He certainly has that quality as demonstrated by his many years serving on the MSFA committees. Obi is committed to performing the duties of this office to the best of his ability. He has traveled all across the state for many years and brings with him a wealth of experience and knowledge. Certainly, firefighter safety is at the top of this list. I strongly endorse and support Hobie Howe for the Office of Trustee. I think Hobie summed it up best in his campaign brochure, which he wrote. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to continue my involvement with the MSFA, promoting and assisting with any issues our firefighters may have in Maryland, working on their behalf during unusual, unforeseen, or even dreadful times, providing a service to the citizens of Maryland. Again, I encourage you to endorse, elect, and support Hobie Howe as our trustee. Now it's my pleasure to introduce past president John Denver to second the nomination. Good evening, John Denver, past president of the MSFA. House, Vice Presidents Walker and McCray, officers, members, and guests. It's a privilege to second the nomination of Hobie Howe for the Office of Trustee. Over the next few weeks, a number of officers of our great association will be elected or appointed. I believe the Office of Trustee is one of the most important. 
As volunteers, we help each we help others through what are often the worst days of their lives. The trustees are tasked with helping our volunteers, their families, and their departments through the worst days of their lives following a serious injury or death of a first responder. While I hold all volunteers' efforts in high regard, I can think of no higher responsibility than this. Those entrusted with this duty must exhibit caring, commitment, and integrity. I believe that Hobie has shown these traits through his nearly 50 years of volunteer service. His caring and commitment to the safety and well-being of volunteers are evident through his 20 years of membership on the MSFA Safety Committee. That he was appointed chairman of that committee by five different presidents speaks volumes about his integrity. In addition, his work with, to his work with the MSFA, he has also been involved in the Cumberland Valley Association Emergency Responder Highway Safety Program. This program addresses one of the most severe dangers that our first responders are exposed to. His leadership experiences in his own department as president of the Hartford Cecil Association and as president of the multi-state Cumberland Valley Association have prepared him well for the role of trustee. I ask that all of you joining us, join us in supporting Hobie for trustee. In closing, I would like to introduce MSFA past president, Steve Cox, to read a list of additional seconds to Hobie's nomination. Thank you, President Denver. It's an honor for me to name the persons that have seconded the nomination of Hobie Howe for trustee, past presidents of the Maryland State Firemen's Association, Bobby Balta, Mark Bilger, Richard Blair, Stephen Cox, Bob Cumberland, Michael Davis, John Denver, Carl Eadlin, Robert Jacobs, David Keller III, David Lewis, Johnny Roth, Barney Smith, Roger Steger Sr., Paul Sterling Jr., Terry Thompson, Frank Underwood, Gene Worthington, the Harford County Department of Emergency Services Director, Eddie Hopkins, other fire company members in Harford and Baltimore County, Boston Volunteer Fire and Ambulance Company Incorporated, President Chris Gibbons, members and the board, Long Green Volunteer Fire Company, President Ian Galloway, members and the board. State of Maryland County Firemen's Association endorsements include Harford County Volunteer Fire and EMS Association President Rusty Iyer, Vice President Bill Dusa, Harford Cecil Volunteer Firemen's Association President Steve Cox, Vice President Skip Mayhem. Allegheny Garrett Volunteer Firemen's Association, President Gene Kidwell, Vice President Jonathan Dayton, Secretary Barbara Nippenberg, Baltimore County Volunteer Firemen's Association, President John McDowell, Vice President Doug Simpkins Jr., Howard County Volunteer Firemen's Association, President Raymond Wines, Worcester County Volunteer Firemen's Association, President Tim Jessen. Other persons with the MSFA, Chief Chaplain John Long, Deacon Charlie Barnhart, Reverend Marvin Jackson, from the trustees, Doug Alexander, Ben Kurtz, Jeffrey Thompson, Terry Thompson, from the executive committee, Wayne Tone Sr., John Fisher, Tim Dayton, Robert Phillips, Doug Simpkins. From the treasurer's office, Ron Sarnicky, Wiley Donaldson Jr., Mitch Vogt, Bobby Aaron. The executive director, Kate Tominelli. The parliamentarian, Richard Brooks III. Other county members and fire companies, Ed Benish, Boston Volunteer Fire Company. Kathy Pilichowski, Boston Volunteer Fire Company. Mark Pilichowski, Boston Volunteer Fire Company. Victoria Cunningham, Boston Volunteer Fire Company. Don Bender, Aberdeen Volunteer Fire Company. Linda Dusa, Abington Fo Volunteer Fire Company. 
Bill Lay Sr., Joppa Magnolia Volunteer Fire Company, Sam Sowers, Darlington Volunteer Fire Company, Sandy and Nolan Gallion, Level Volunteer Fire Company, Ron Soller, Bel Air Volunteer Fire Company, Rusty Leftwich, Norrisville Volunteer Fire Company, Benjamin Kurtz, Jarrettsville Volunteer Fire Company, Buddy Swears Jr., Avity Grass Ambulance, Donald Briscoe, Chesapeake City Volunteer Fire Company, Robin Shelton Hong, past president, LAMSFA, and Hacks Point Volunteer Fire Company, Ray Stevens, Hartford Cecil Volunteer Firemen's Association, Johnny Witham, Southern Maryland Association, Steve Berry, Royal Water Supply Committee, Calvin Stack, past president, Dorchester Firemen's Association, Bill Hildebrand, NEMA Fire Personnel Group, Edward Woods Jr., 17 State Circle Committee, Buddy Campbell, past president, Eastern Shore Firemen's Association, Dean Aaron, Safety Committee, Barbara Steiner, Safety Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Are, are there any other nominations for the Office of Trustee? Mr. President. Doyle Cox. Yes, sir. Mr. President, Vice President Walker, Vice President McRae, uh, fellow, fellow officers, members of the Executive Committee, delegates, and guests. Today, I'm here to place the name of Thomas A. Madeley Jr of the Leonardtown Volunteer Fire Department as a candidate for the Office of Trustees of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. Tommy is a life member of the Leonardtown Volunteer Fire Department with 33 years of service. He's held many positions, president, vice president, assistant chief, chief, along with other operational and administrative uh, positions within the department. Tommy retired after 29 years of service with the St. Mary's County Department of Emergency Service 911 Center. When he retired, he was the manager. As you can see, Tommy has held many leadership positions within the department as well as with the county where he was employed. In all of his roles, he has demonstrated his excellence, excellency, uh, ability to fulfill the duties and responsibility of the position uh, that he held. Tommy has traveled throughout the state of Maryland preparing for the office of trustee. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a honor and privilege for me to place the name of my friend Tommy Madley Jr. for the Board of Trustees of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. And I ask you for your support and electing in electing him as the, to the Board of Trustees. It is my belief that Tommy is the right person for this position. Thank you. Thank you, Doyle. And uh, who is seconding the nomination, please? Right. David Ridge. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. President, uh, Phil Ridgell, president of the Southern Maryland Volunteer Farmers Association, uh, would like to second the nomination for Thomas A. Mattingly, Jr. for the Office of Trustee with the Maryland State Farmers Association, along with the Leonardtown Volunteer oh. Fire Department, President Gary Bell, Sr., the St. Mary's County Fire Board Association, President J.A. Nelson, St. Mary's County Ambulance and Rescue Association, President Rocky Woodburn, Prince George's County Volunteer Fire Rescue Association President, Mark Trader, past president of Maryland State Farms Association, Danny Davis, past president of the association, uh, Bobby Balta, Maryland State Farmers Association past president Fred Cross, Maryland State Farmers Association past president Frank Underwood, Maryland State Farmers Association past president Phil Herlock, 
past president of the Maryland State Farms Association, Dave Lewis, past president of Maryland State Farms Association, Robert Jacobs, past president of Maryland State Farms Association, Roger Stanger, past president of Maryland State Farms Association, Richard Blair, past president of Maryland State Farms Association, Mark Belger, uh, Maryland State Farms Association Executive Committee Chairman, Robbie Blackson, Executive Committee Vice Chair, Lee Lux, Executive Committee Member Dan Stevens, Executive Committee Member Ron Block, and the Maryland State Farms Association Treasurer, Ron Sarnicky. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Are there any other nominations for the uh, Board of Trustees? Any other nominations for the Board of Trustees? Any other nominations for the Board of Trustees? Move to be closed. Second. So have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, uh, that concludes the nominations as far as the list that I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you everyone for your participation this evening. I truly appreciate it. Mike, you still yes, have sir. the location of the 2025 convention on the list. Is that, for the, is, that, is that under the nominations or is that that's the second piece of order, correct? Listed with the nominations. Doyle? It can go either place. It can go now as a uh, uh, nomination to go on the ballot, or it can wait until we get down later on in the uh, uh, executive committee uh, moving it to the, uh, uh, but it's, I guess the best thing now is uh, do it now. Okay, I'll entertain, uh, entertain a motion. Demkins. Go ahead, Doug. Motion to have it in Ocean City in 2025. Second. Who was the second, please? Rick Blair. Thank you, gentlemen. We have a motion and a uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Thank you for bringing it up, Charlie. And now, Mr. Chairman, oh. I'll turn it back over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Good luck to all candidates. Uh, look forward to working with the candidates of the upcoming year. Uh, with that said, uh, I need a motion to post a ballot on the MSFA website on June 16th. So moved. Let's make a motion. Second. Second, Wayne Tove. I have a motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Motion carried. Need a motion to open elections on June 19th and close at 11.59 p.m. on June 25th. Stepkins, motion. Second. I have a motion. Second. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. I think I've got all the motions and the nominations. Uh, I would call on the uh, election subgroup chair, uh, Skip. Did we miss anything? Skip Storm. Robbie, I saw his name pop up earlier. It looked like he may have gotten booted out somehow, but I'm not I'm sure. here, Robbie. There. I'm here. Yes. Can you hear me? Do you have any additional or did we cover everything that need to be covered for the election from the subcommittee? 
No, yep. you, you did you did a good job there. The only thing I would ask is that uh, the uh, committee, the executive committee, keep in mind and and remind their companies out there about the election process uh, and the dates and times that are required, and tell them that the, the ballots will be the ballots will be uh, sent to them. On the, uh, I think the twenty first. Let me check. On the nineteenth, they'll be mailed out to the chair of each delegation and the past presidents. So it's uh, uh, Ron Woods. Had, I mean Dennis Woods has made it very clear on the ballot. Some instructions. It's um, a second grader should be able to do it, and. Um, if they have a problem, contact somebody at the state and we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But so far, we believe that all the emails have, have been checked, but uh, just make sure to remind your people that there's a timeline that has to be done and a certain way this ballot needs to be filled out. Point of order, Mr. President. Mr. Chairman, Doug Simpkins, do we need to cover uh, the uncontested uh, positions by a vote of the secretary? Good, Doug. Did you get that? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Just accept the motion if you'd like to present it. I'll second that motion. Yes. Yes, Doug. Robbie, I made a motion to for the secretary. Sorry, to I'm in and out. I'm sorry. He's in and out on the computer. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, a motion to have the secretary cast a ballot for uncontested positions for the calendar year 2020 in the Maryland State Farmers Association. Run block seconds. I have a motion to have a second run contestant uh, positions within MSFA leadership. Um, any discussion? Who cast the vote for Doyle? All in favor? Aye. 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 There was a question as to who, who, who opposed who the vote for the secretary. Huh? There was a question while you all were voting, who who cast the vote for the secretary? Hold on, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Let the chairman, Mr. Chairman, just clean that one up, please. I'm sorry, I was in and out. What, what, I missed some of that. All right, so you just as a point of order, you have a motion uh, that you just accepted for the secretary to cast the ballot for the uncontested offices. Take a motion now to have the president cast the ballot for the office of secretary. So moved. Okay, thank you. Second. A motion to cast uh, the, for the president to cast the ballot for the secretary. A motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any executive committee members have anything to add while we're on call? Good to see everybody. Hope everyone's healthy. Yeah, I'd just like to take a minute to uh, thank the convention committee, especially the subcommittee of the, for the election, uh, for the job well done. I know this is uh, history in the making, but I think it went very well. Appreciate everybody coming on the Zoom meeting tonight. Um, before we close, I just want to make one announcement to the executive committee members. I will be calling a executive committee meeting on Sunday morning at 09 for our last executive committee meeting for the year um, to um, accept some minutes and then last uh, comments from the executive committee members. If anyone has any issues or anything, they can email or text me or call me, and we'll work around that. But I think we need to have one last meeting um, before the uh, Mr. President's year's end. 
With that, I need a motion for adjournment. Mr. Chairman. Excuse me. Mr. Yes. Chairman, it's Mitch. Um, while you're all together, I want to take this time to really thank and, and appreciate all the support I've gotten for the raffle from the executive committee and members and companies throughout the state. Even though with this pandemic, the, the total numbers are going to be down from last year, the efforts that the, that the executive committee members uh, put forth in their jurisdictions, I really appreciate it. Um, they went far beyond what was expected of them uh, to help this year. And I, again, I really appreciate all their help. Thanks. Thanks, Mitch. Anyone else? Rob, Bob Phillips, are you going to send out a, an email as to this next meeting yeah. on Sunday? That's correct, sir. There will be, uh, uh, be another Zoom meeting like we had tonight, and I will be sending it out. Or excuse me, Secretary Cox will be sending it out. Thank you. Anyone else? Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. The next meeting will be on the same, same meeting information you have here. Next Zoom meeting or the next exec meeting will be the same okay. meeting information you have here. And if anybody joined the call after Doyle did the roll call, please hang on the line long enough to let him know who you are so he gets you in the roll call. Good job. Thanks, Richard. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Vote right. on the motion, Mr. Night. Chairman. Over and we, done. We need to vote on the motion. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, this this <laughs> Lee Lutz, we need to I vote motion on that. Second. I asked all in favor. I'm in and out. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I couldn't hear you. They've got we got wait for the news. Who in favor or I? Yeah, I can't hear you guys either. Exactly the same. All I think we're adjourned. Uh, uh, all opposed? Uh, hey, Robbie, so